to go and we're ready to go. And it's Thursday and it's trending. Right now we got like, it looks like a storm coming through. I'm watching the window because it's looking a little bit like the Wizard of Oz out there right now. But good evening, everyone. This is Carol So, AKA Nani Boss, live with you. Sister, let's say good evening, everyone. This is Janice, AKA Wellness Diva 6.0 on this trending Thursday, um, June 15th. Wow, we're halfway through June, which is, you know, the time seems to pass much too quickly. And um, let's just get trending right off the start. And we'll start with one Twitter update. Um, oh boy, okay. Because I have not, literally, I've been I'm so busy. Um, you know, obviously working on multiple, I'm trying to move in a little bit more so I can see what the weather is. Oh, now it's, yeah, it's really it's looking ominous up there. Uh, anywho, uh, yeah, I, I haven't been paying attention to the news because I've literally been uh, coordinating and uh, chatting with customers for Winner's Choice Championships for next season. So busy doing that. And of course, uh, I am on my sixth day of my detox. Uh, it's going very, very well. And then let's see what else, of course, you know, sharing the Thrive Experience podcast and then just nonstop HOA. So I have had no time. Okay. So moving we'll on the <laughs> with the Twitter updates, episode number four for Tucker Carlson, Tucker is on fire. So that was a really good episode. And, you know, I would have to say that sarcasm is definitely in the air and he is just such a pro and you know as one as i said to gary uh a couple nights ago i think when tucker came out with episode number two um if even if he did you can do for instance on um twitter you can have people like sign up for your exclusive content even if he charged a dollar um you know a month or whatever millions millions just unbelievable but right now you know i'm not sure if he's going to do that so but i i just thought for a moment and a lot of people are saying that oh my god he should do that but you know whatever tucker does i'm sure he obviously has quite a following and what else is trending i had the opportunity and i think this is amazing to chat with um a man his name is don wardlow um my stories podcast he is a the first um in baseball to be a baseball announcer in the minor league the so minor league. very very interesting conversation unfortunately he's a yankees fan well yeah that's a that's a game changer for me obviously uh, I am not a Yankees fan. I've never been a Yankees fan, nor do I intend to ever become a Yankees fan. Um, yeah, stinking Yankees. No, and, and actually New York as a whole, it's disappointing because I used to love New York. Now I despise it. I know I actually despise, that's a pretty strong word. I don't despise it, but it's pretty sad what, what they, they've done to that city and the craziness that's going on there. So uh, I cannot see myself ever uh, sadly, ever going back there. I mean, I, I had dreams of, you know, bringing our granddaughter, which, you know, she loves, you know, production, she loves dance, you know, the Radio City Music Hall. You know, I always dreamt about that when she was old enough and she was at that age. So I'm kind of disappointed in that piece to it. But, you know, everyone's like, ah, just go to New York and have a good time. I just, you know, there's nothing there that inspires me to go anymore. Uh, and furthermore, it's a dangerous city. Uh, you know, you could have people yeah. just out and about and, you know, uh, you get thugs coming at you and just beating the crap out of you. So, no, I have no interest in going to New York City at all, yeah. ever again, which is sad, but it is yeah. what it is. Unless they, like, did, like, when Giuliani uh, got into office and just gutted it and, you know, cleaned it up. So I shouldn't say never, because you never, you never should say never say never, because you just never know. But at this point in time, in the uh, conditions that we're under right now. I, I wouldn't think about it. But you know what else is trending is obviously I'm feeling a lot of stars and stripes. I got my nails done today. Yeah, I see that. And they're a really pretty shade, which is very unusual for me because I, I, I get stuck in this, you know, like an ocean blue or Caribbean blue. So my girl, 
she goes, come on, it's July 4th coming up, which I cannot even believe. We're already talking July 4th. Because I always say when there's certain dates that hit, and then it's like rewind and then maybe pause a little bit, rewind. So for the summer months, to me, as soon as July 4th hits, your mindset, at least especially in the New England areas, already getting the kids back to school, like, you know, back to school shopping and all that. When you hit October 31st, you know, obviously that's Halloween. You can blink an eye and it's already New Year's Day. Um, so there's certain, and those are probably the two out of the year, two, two big ones out of the year that are, I mean, obviously July 4th is a big holiday. Uh, it's a great time for family and friends to get together and celebrate the, uh, you know, America's birthday. And then of course, uh, Halloween, uh, it is for the old and young. So those are two major holidays that kind of catapult you into the next season almost. So, and, and then push it forward. So I would, that's when I think of July 4th, I think, okay, blink, because now we'll be in September and not, not very long from there, which is true. I don't know, it's time as you age. Uh, I remember as a child, you know, what was trending this time of year was, you know, school's out for the summer and it seemed like it was endless. And as an adult, you blink and it's gone. Yeah, there's a whole lot of blinking going on in more ways than one for sure. And just one quick uh, follow up on New York. You couldn't pay me to go to New York. Yeah, it's pretty scary times there, you know, and I feel bad for the, you know, the people that love their city and watching it being destroyed and watching the crime continually rise. It's at an astronomical height of, of you know, and we're not talking, you know, like little crimes. We're talking about, and and I guess because the way they're demonizing the uh, system of, of of how you get arrested and whatnot. I mean, a lot of these things doesn't matter. Like you could basically go out and murder somebody, and you're on you're on bail the, the next night or whatever. I mean, there, there's no common sense anymore. Common sense, common sense in New York City is, and I'm not saying necessarily the people. Uh, definitely who's in charge there, they have no common sense. Everything they're doing is bad, bad for everybody. Because you know what? And, and when I think about these cities that have really gone down the shithole, because the gutter, the sewer, um, it shows in their numbers. It shows in their statistics of crime, uh, hate crime, uh, which all crime is hateful. So I shouldn't even classify that because I think that that's another word that's overplayed. Uh, but crime, um, you know, pricing, housing, uh, litter, homeless people on the street. In every single category over the last three years, it's only gotten worse. So you wonder why someone might not say, hmm, I don't think we're doing a good job or this strategy, this, this, this propaganda that we're selling, it's not really working. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they want it this bad. Maybe, I, not, to me, I think they want it this bad because you're, oh. you're doing nothing to change it. You're doing nothing to clean it up. Well, you know, the the story as far as in another city in that same kind of detriment to their whole society there, you know, Chicago, ever since the new mayor took over, um, I was uh, reading an article that, you know, Grime is up. 38% since he took office, since he was, you know, sworn in. That was what, uh, two months ago, something like that? Correct. So maybe they're going for the old 50%. Let's get a 50% up there. You yeah, know, rising, right, rising stats is not a good thing, people, in, in some avenues. Rising stats for good things, that's a plus, that's a positive. You aim for that. And I'm just wondering, are they aiming for the, you know, are they competing? You got, you got Chicago, you got New York, you got California, uh, was it Oregon? I don't know, there's a, another state. And it's like, they're they're fighting for the worst ratings ever. <laughs> that's what, I mean, that's yeah. how I think of it. I mean, they're running all right. They're running their stats way up high. I mean, uh, I forgot, oh gosh, what state it was. I wanna say Minnesota, I'm sure I'm wrong. But we're, you know, the summer of love, the chap zone, oh, yeah. Yeah. all that crapola. Well, mm -hmm. one of the um, businesses that was in the chap zone that was kind of going along with the summer of love, 
now their business is like blah and you know they're suing the city of course they are because isn't that the way you know you don't get your way you you hey I was on your tailcoats. I was all for what you're doing to the city. Now I'm in harm's way because my business is like the Titanic and sinking fast. So give me the money. Show me the money. I mean, that's, you know, it's bizarre, man. We are definitely, well, like I said, nothing still stops what happened on Flag Day at, uh, at the White House. So I still got that vision in my head and somehow just can't shake it. But, you know, it's not one of those things like you get, you see something, you're like, oh. I cannot rewind what I saw. Yeah, I I felt that way. And again, you know, just briefly, I had to like look at it several times. I'm like, wait a minute, am I am I seeing this correctly? Yeah. You know, when they say seeing is believing, but I wasn't sure. I, I wanted to make sure that, you know, was it was it staged? You know, obviously the photo op itself was staged, but did they like photoshop something and then you know of course i yeah. you know, did some digging and you know there it was in full-blown format and uh oh lordy yeah oh lordy uh and like i said you know not for children's eyes but i guess in some of those wackos um it is because let's face it i'm just gonna plug this in real quick because i um, the storm looks pretty you know pretty right now. i want to make sure i'm not without power um but a change of subject, let's change from that because we know all that kind of stuff is trending. We want positive things to trend. And I think, you know, there are some positive pieces to the world. Uh, you know, you just kind of sometimes you got to dig a little bit to get them. Um, but, you know, just being kind to people and doing something that they're, un, you know, unsuspecting to them that they were not expecting and all of a sudden, they find themselves on a better journey or a better avenue or a better better place from a mindset. So I think what I've been noticing when I'm talking to people and chatting about things that are trending, they say uh, they really are trend. What's trending for them is turning off the TV and or really not paying attention to anything. Focusing on, you know, there's a lot of networks that have like the old, old shows, the old sitcoms, um, getting back into, you know, playing uh, board games, uh, really enjoying the outdoors this time of year. So people are tuning them out. Uh, you know, obviously when you have some something horrific, and it was horrific, people may not describe what happened on Flag Day horrific, but it was <laughs> just a stain on our country. Obviously, that was everywhere. Uh, news alerts. Uh, you open up your email. You know, you got some sort of message from from somebody about it. So that really has taken the cake this way. I think, as far as things trending, um, and not in a good way, but you know, because it upsets people. You know, it makes them sad that that's happening on our people's house. But I, I do it. You know, talking to more and more people, they're just tur turning out news altogether, and I think that's a good thing. I think that is a good thing to be trending, like get involved with, you know, read a book, go out and volunteer somewhere, go help someone, actually go out and see if you can help someone. I think that's a great idea. I think that is an amazing idea. And, you know, what better way to, to really help someone by, you know, kind of going out of, going out of your way, and it doesn't have to be anything significant. And, you know, just be kind, you know, somebody, you know, maybe you've got a, um, a cart full of groceries and there's somebody behind you that just, you know, has a couple of items in their hand. I always look behind me and I, I let people, you know, go ahead of me and they're, you know, they're just so grateful and they're just like, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm running later, you know, and, and it's not a big thing, but to them it is. Well, Actually, that uh, speaking of that, that happened today, and I went to look at the gentleman, and he only had a couple of things, and I I didn't have many things either. I think I had like five things. My my items were bigger uh, than his were. He, we probably have a similar amount, but his were just small. And so as I I was turning to like say, you know, like do you want to go? And he was already scouring another aisle, and uh, he ended up 
catching someone, I believe that a cashier that was just opening up, so he ran. So you could see that he was definitely in a hurry. Um, so you do, I, I always try to, the same thing. I, I kind of look what's in my cart and gee, do I live, you know, do I have a lot more items than the person behind me, let them go first. And it is, uh, you know, an act of kindness. It is saying, hey, you know what? I know your time is valuable as mine. I'm going to be here a little bit longer. So what's a little bit longer now? You uh -huh. know, so, it, and it's helpful to people, you know, especially if they're running later. Um, and then you get those impatient people that are actually entitled. The people that are entitled, I just ignore. And you can tell who they are. You know, um, you know, they, they, they start looking at, say, you say you're in like a 10 or less aisle, you know, one of the express aisles. And of course, let's face it, a lot of stores are doing the self-checkout thing, which is good and bad. There's uh, some, some good and bad in it. Uh, I heard something to flip it around. I heard someone say, if you are not going to have a live person and you're depending on me to do your job and cash out, do not stand at the door and say, look at my receipt. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I did your job and now you're going to question me and look at my receipt. Now, I do understand why they have to do that. but don't think that, because uh, I've done this a couple of times where like if something was on the bottom of the cart and I forgot about it and I get to the car, I go, oh shoot. And I'll usually run back in and say, hey, you know, you forgot my water or whatever. But there have been times where I didn't catch something. And then I, you know, go back and they're like, well, you know, I don't have the receipt. And they're like, okay. So they, I mean, obviously they, they, a part of their business is they know that there's going to be some loss with some like that. I mean, obviously those that are actually trying to steal a whole different ball game, but you wonder why you can have uh, certain similarities go on where somebody forgot to actually, you know, check underneath the, the, the carriage and, and the cashier forgets and you just, it happens. You don't, you're not checking them out though, but you're checking out the people that actually you know, and I don't know if there's a high percentage of, of people that, you know, forget and or try and do something not so nice. But I thought it was funny. Somebody had posted that. Like, if you're I'm not going to do your, your, I'm not getting paid. I'm doing your job. I'm doing your favor by shopping here. And then you're going to stand there and tell me, you got to look at my receipt. Now, obviously, like, like Sam's Club, BJ's, they all do that. So it's pretty calm knowledge. You cannot believe the wind that's going on right now. It's like the Wizard of Oz. Oh, I can. I've lived in Florida. I can imagine. The uh, trees are like kind of sideways. I'm hoping we don't lose power. Normally, we don't. We've been pretty fortunate. We have not lost any. I think, well, as I say that, I saw a little with the lightning. Oh, and you just froze up. I'm wondering if we lost you. We'll give it just another second here. And I think we did lose her with a storm coming through. I'm going to text her. We lost you. And that's apparently what's trending for us right now because we lost Carol Sue. We'll give it just another second, see if she replies to me on this trending Thursday. But of course, we want to know what is trending for you. What is trending for you? You can always go to our website, www.twosistas.online, and that's S-I-S-T-A-S dot online. My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 6.0, and I was just with two sisters, Carol Sue, aka Nani Boss. We shall see you again real soon. Thank you so much for being here, and remember... You be the trendsetter, just be kind. Thank you so much, everyone. And we shall see you tomorrow morning for Fantabulous Friday. I just got a quick um, text message from her. And have a great evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.